Let's do some detective work and some digital forensics to try and uncover how one hacker wanted to pull off a malware attack just by plugging in a USB drive. This is today's task from the Try Hack Me Advent of Cyber Challenge. On day eight, December 8th, we're gonna dive into some access data FTK imager. So I'll go ahead and scroll down to this challenge in disk forensics, and there's a little bit of the storyline here. I have gone ahead and spun up the virtual machine. I have that connected with the VPN with the credentials, username and password combination I can use here, and the objectives are to just analyze these digital artifacts and evidence. We'll recover recently deleted digital artifacts and verify the integrity of a driver image just like this USB drive in part of the action here. This is pretty awesome. They go through a little bit of the storyline, the lore, where our adversary leaves USB drives in the parking lot and the poor innocent victim plugs it in and could very well have been attacked. For the sake of our learning environment, we do have the drive, this USB drive mounted and accessible for us, but it is in read only mode. It's trying to replicate that real world scenario where a physical drive is connected to a write blocker as you would do for real digital forensics. Now there is a whole lot of text and explanation on how to use access data FTK imager, but personally, I wanna get our hands dirty. I wanna just dive in. So let's go ahead, fire it up and see what tasks we have to complete. At the very bottom here, we have our practical exercise, we want to look for the malware command and control server. We want to look for some files inside a deleted zip archive, deleted PNG files, and validate the integrity by determining the SHA-1 hash. So I have started the machine and let's dive in. Here we are inside of the virtual machine associated with today's task. I am connected via RDP or that remote desktop protocol over the VPN and I've spun up that FTK imager icon on the desktop. This will take just a moment to start, but then we can dig in. Here we go, user account control kicking in. We can select yes and it'll fire it up. I'll go ahead and full screen this and we can move over to that file item in the menu navigation and let's add an evidence item, which is a physical drive. I'll go ahead and click next and we wanna make sure that we select from the the drop down physical drive number two, as that was what was suggested inside the text article for Try Hack Me here. Now we can load this up and in our evidence tree on that top left, we can expand these out and now we can see all of the files present on the drive. Looks like there's a do not open folder, a password cracking tool dot seven zip archive. Now, unfortunately, I can't make the text size any bigger here. Uh, connecting over RDP doesn't really allow me to toggle the display settings, but we can see the listing of files present on this USB drive. Looks like there are a couple deleted files. They're marked with this X here. Uh, you can see some folders as well as other PNG images, all with an X that are deleted. But hey, thanks to this forensics toolkit, we could try to recover them. Inside this do not open directory though, I'm a little bit curious about what that is. Oh, and I see some Cryptoy Miner prototype Python scripts. We can see the text down below, maybe uh, some hash lib requests, all some methods and functionality here. But I am a little bit curious about that secret chat.txt file. Ooh. Oh, it looks like this is a chat message back and forth between these actors. They say, hey, you there? Yeah, what's up? Just finalizing the malware C2 setup. The server is good to go at mcgreedysecretc2.thm. Oh, so there is the answer to the first question. What is the malware command and control server? I will go ahead and copy that domain and we'll go bring that back to try hack me to submit it. What is the malware C2 server? Let's just paste that, go ahead and submit, and perfect, that answer is correct. Now we need to know what file is inside the deleted zip archive. Ooh, we thought we saw one of those earlier. Back inside the FTK imager, I do see that juicy tomatoy.zip, uh, and I don't think we even need to extract this out because it gives us the file name here as it's displaying that little preview here. We could, if we wanted to, right click and export that file. That'll allow us to create a copy of it and actually interact with it on our file system, but this might be enough for us. Juicy tomatoy.exe. Let's see, can I try and submit that juicy tomatoy.exe? Go ahead and click submit. Yes, that's the correct answer. Okay, easy enough. Next question is a little bit interesting. Hey, what flag is hidden in one of the deleted PNG files? Now, bear in mind, a PNG file is an image, right? It's a picture. So all the contents of the file, the bytes, the hex, whatever data representation you're getting up looking that file at, it's all non-printable characters, though. It's not just plain text, like English words and letters that we can read. It's computer speak. So here, TriHackMe is really great about this because you can click on the hints and it'll show you, you know what? If you want to search through the hex or the bytes of the file, 
file, you could actually use that control F hotkey and then try to look for the flag prefix or the actual token and string that you're looking for, just capital THM for try hack me, and then that opening curly brace. Let's go see if we can find it. Looking back in access data, there is nothing in this, hey, do not open directory that is a .png file. So I'm going to move back up to the root of the USB drive file system. And there were a couple others that we saw. There were some deleted .png files. Here's one portrait.png. Um, that's going to be displaying it kind of automatically down below. We also see a wallpaper.png. Both of those would be worth digging into. Was there anything else? No, I think that's it. So let's go swap this, kind of switch it over to that hex view. And I'm going to click into that area down below where it shows the preview. And let me hit control F on my keyboard. And let's search for that THM all caps and an opening curly brace. I'll go ahead and hit find and okay, not present in that apparently. Um, let's go look in the portrait. We can try that one. I'll click in again and do the exact same steps. Fingers crossed we'll have a hit. There it is. Okay, THM byte level analysis. Okay, that's a lot of lead speak. Can I copy that out? Uh, kind of not really. Let me see if I can right click. Okay, cool. We can copy just the text with control C. With that, we can go ahead and submit our flag. We'll paste that in here. Submit and correct. Another correct answer. Now the last one this is super duper simple. Hey, we need to verify the integrity of our image. All that really means is like calculating the hash of the file or checking out the digital fingerprint or the checksum. Hey, doing some mathematical calculations and functions to boil down this entire file and all of its bytes and data there into one small little string of hexadecimal values. I'm sure you know all about hashes and checksums, but this is absolutely crucial when you're doing like real world digital forensics, because say you have literally a piece of evidence, like something under a judicial system that requires going into court and being submitted as evidence, it is absolutely paramount important that you are working with the correct evidence file, so you always absolutely undoubtedly need to check that hash. Thankfully, this is super duper easy to do with an FTK imager. All we need to do is go to our physical drive in the evidence tree, right click and verify driver image. And it will take a little bit of time because it's got to crunch the numbers for everything in this file, but it will eventually give us the actual hash fingerprint and checksum that we need to submit for try hack me. All right, been about a minute and a half. We were about 90% of the way there, almost done. Just about there at the very end, look at that. Okay, so we have our MD5 hash that's computed and evaluated along with the SHA-1 hash. Now, they were asking for the SHA-1 hash, so again, we can right click, copy, paste. I think I might need to control C because I can't seem to right click here, but that's okay. That should still give us the value and let's go paste it into try hack me. What is the SHA-1 hash of the physical drive and forensic image? Let's paste that in and submit. There we go. That is the correct answer. And we're done. That's everything that we needed to tactically answer for this challenge. But they note, hey, if you like today's tasks, you have the digital forensics case B4DM755. Bad mess, maybe? Th that room or bad miss? I don't know. <laughs> that room is an excellent overview of the entire digital forensics and incident response process. So worth checking out if you're interested. That is a totally free room. We can go ahead and mark that as complete. And we are done with today's task. I don't know about you, but I am loving the Try Hack Me advent of cyber thus far. It's always got some, hey, beginner friendly sort of small stuff to get you crawl, walk, run, and really digging into a lot of these security tasks and slowly ramping up the difficulty and trajectory, but still showcasing awesome and incredible things in our cybersecurity industry. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed today's task, and I'll see you in the next one for Try Hack Me advent of cyber. Link in the video description. You should jump into the action. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.